That's awesome. Well, good morning. Thank you all so much for the birthday wishes. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, means a lot. Thank you all team for putting together the video to hear from our overseers and all those people uh, that shared have just had such an impact on my life. So uh, means a lot to me. I hope you can hear me. I, I, I'm, I'm nursing an ear infection and a sinus infection. I feel like I'm on the tail end of it, but my ear just sounds funny. So anyway, I think I sound okay. Come on. Um, well, we do. I do want to have one other thing before I jump in the Word today uh, that, that we're going to do. I'm going to have somebody uh, each week we may, we'll, we'll probably do this, uh, just people that have been impacted by Oak City and been um, moved to give in, in many different ways, really. Uh, we're going to have people just share as we're doing this building campaign. Uh, and we have somebody, the Gilbert family. I don't know if, you, if most of you know the Gilbert family. Can we give it up for just the Gilberts, Nathan and... Kathy and Kim and Nathan aren't here today, but but Greg, come on up. This is Greg, and uh, I have I've, I don't know. You can come on up here. We've we've probably known each other now for a couple years now. Maybe yeah. yeah he he'd been coming to some of our more nights, and uh, they probably joined our church. I don't know how long it's been now. Maybe well, uh, September was a year. September was a year. And uh, I've just been so moved by them and their family, and they've even kind of lit a, a spark of fire of God in me, just seeing what God's done in them. Uh, so I'm just going to let them let him take a few minutes and just share. Well, that's what I was going to say is September marked our first full year of being a part of this church. But we have loved this church from afar for many years, and it's funny or fitting that Joaquin and Eddie were a part of this today because we first came here for a conference about four years ago that Joaquin was supposed to speak at, but he got sick, and Eddie showed up. It was a healing conference. And it was amazing. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And uh, I don't think over that period of time we missed an event or a worship night that you had unless we had a conflict where we were out of town. And we, we were just so blessed and so blown away from from what God was doing here, and we got to know Jonathan and, and fell in love with him and the lovely Miss Amy, who's not here now as well. And through the COVID mess and other circumstances in our life, we felt a release from the church that we were, had been attending. And for me, that wasn't another option but to be a part of this body. And it's, it's been an amazing year, and we feel fortunate to be here at this point in this time in the history of this church. And sitting here last week listening to Mark, who was excellent, by the way, um, I, I thought about the process that, that our little church went through, which was very similar. We started out in a, in a commercial setting like we are here. And I'm in the construction industry. And when you use a building for something other than its intended use, you can get by with it. And, but getting by is not what God wants you to do. And our process, thinking, hearing what, what they went through or what they've gone through, was so similar. We went through about a year where it was on, it was off, it was hanging on by a thread, it was dead, it was alive, and on and on and on for almost the same process. And having gone through it now and looking back at it and how God was working, it was so much, it was God was preparing us to know that it didn't matter what we had or didn't have, he was enough. And the other thing was, and, and it seems like it's similar as well. He was preparing the people that owned the property that we were the only ones God wanted to have it. And as a result, we found favor and consideration through the whole process. And I guess the third thing I learned is the money didn't come in just in whole hard, hard, cold numbers that we needed. It came in through God generally blessing the congregation and raising the congregation up with us as we went. So people were giving the money that we needed through blessing. And we feel confident that that's what God wants to do here. So having told you privately, I want to say publicly that Kathy and I are in. And we believe, in, and to use Kathy's word, as word she uses all the time, is catapult. We believe that God is going to use this to catapult this church to its next place in the plan and purpose that God has for it. Come on. And we're just happy to be a part. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Kathy. I've just love again their hunger for God. It's been it's been inspiring to me. 
Um, <clears throat> next week, we're going to give uh, just a little bit more detailed update on where we are financially with the campaign. And also, um, we, we obviously have goals. There's targets that we have that we obviously, our ultimate target is we want to pay off the whole building. And that's what we're believing God for. Um, but we also just know the numbers that we need in order to make this work. And we're just going to talk through a little bit of that next week. Uh, so, uh, come ready. And if you want to go ahead and give to, to help us with those numbers, even for next week, and make a commitment, that will help us um, just with that. So, y'all are awesome. I want to talk about something this morning. As I turn 40 uh, this week, uh, my wife uh, put together this night uh, with some friends of mine that I have known for some of them 20 years, 10 years. Many of them were even in my wedding. And she did this night where <clears throat> these people just toasted to me. And uh, I'm not trying to, I am making this a little bit about me, so give me some grace today. Um, and, and they, they uh, you know, you only turn 40 once. So um, <clears throat> so she did this night, and uh, my friends that I've, I've known for, for a long time, and uh, how many of you know that you need encouragement? You know, it's, it's actually even, even biblical, and I'll, I'll make it biblical here for us. For in, in Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, and it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in a habit of doing during COVID. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you go. Um, but encouraging one another, listen to this, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Paul writes this in 1 Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Um, the truth is, is that we actually all need encouragement. And I actually encourage you, I encourage you in your life uh, to get encouragement, to find encouragement from people. Um, but my, my wife puts this, put this night together and she, she did it where it was almost like a um, rehearsal dinner where everybody makes these toasts. And they, they did this to me, and it was, you know, we, we shared fun stories and memories and, um, and, and really, and also a lot of them just shared just how I had impacted their life. And, and they, they just shared about um, moments that we had had with God together, moments where, man, their life, where together we were going after more of God and something just shifted. And all of a sudden, God became real to them. All of a sudden, I remember one of them shared about, I think sometimes we were praying for somebody and, and their leg grew out and the, the person was healed and the person was watching that. And all of a sudden, their uh, understanding or their belief in God increased because it was like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I experienced this miracle and now what is possible with God is not just in the Bible, but it's, it's real. It's possible today. And, and my friends just were sharing about this and it won, again, it encouraged me, it built me up. But where I'm going with this today is, is it reminded me of my why. It reminded me of my why. Many books and you know, leadership things that you read, many people will say to discover what your why is. And I understand that, that a lot of us, we're all going to have different things that, that motivate us, that inspire us. Um, but I think it's important that we have that. And, and for me this week, you know, to be honest, life has been, it's felt a little bit like a battle recently. Um, you know, there's just been things even in our community that we've, man, our, our church has rallied around and prayed and we've seen breakthrough. And my wife and I, it just seems like past couple of weeks have just not felt well. And even on the toast that night, like I just wasn't, wasn't feeling really well, but I was still just trying to do the best I could to receive from what my friends were saying. And anyway, just a lot of things have been going on. And your why will give you courage in the midst of the struggle. Your why, like what? It, why is Jonathan here? Why Oak City? Why are we looking to buy a new piece of property in Cahaba Heights? And the thing that, that I want to just plant today, my little, my, my message, my seed today for us is, is I was reminded that my why, and I believe even a lot of the heart of why we're here today is because of the manifest presence of God. That the reason that, that we're here, that one of the things that motivates me, excites me more than anything, is I love watching and seeing God move in people's lives. 
I just love it. I love, I was actually at, um, I was, we were at the beach with my family, and I was at Kilwins, and uh, I can't remember if I shared this last week or not, but we were there, and some, we're at the beach, and somebody comes running up to me, and they're like, they, they say, hey, Jonathan, I, and I, I remembered who they were, and they were like, hey, I, I came, we came, my wife and I came to your last more night, and I was like, oh, that's awesome, and, and he started telling me this testimony, and I remembered them, and you could see God had already been working in their lives before this moment, and you can just see like the hunger because God has just been powerfully moving in their lives. And they came, a guy comes running up to me, and he was like, man, we came to your last more night, and my wife has had this um, hip issue for a long time in her life, like always had this problem with her hip, and during the more night, I got to pray for her. And this was the language that he used, which I thought was kind of cool. He said, man, I laid my hands on her and prayed for her, and she said she felt fire go through her leg. And all of a sudden, like all the pain that she had had for, I mean, I think for years, was immediately it was gone. And he was like, and this is like, I don't know, maybe six months after the more night. I can't remember how long it's been, and maybe three months. And I asked her, I was like, have you had any issues with your hip? And she's like, I haven't had any issues ever since the more night. She's like, all the time, I'm always having problems, and there's nothing wrong with it. And some, God had done some other things in their life. And, um, and I just, I love, I love observing what God is doing. You know, the, the, the works of God actually reveal the nature of God. You know, what you do reveals who you are. You know, what we do, it actually reveals who we are. I love this psalm in Psalms 111, verse 2. It says, great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. I like in the New Living Translation, it says, how amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. You know, I just, there's something fun for me of just pondering and thinking about all the things that God has done in our lives and thinking about the works of the Lord because God has done so many works in our lives. And this, you know, just this week, I think turning 40 and, and having that experience with my friends, it, it, as I was just thinking about this Sunday and, and as we're looking at this new piece of property, you know, a heart that, that we have at Oak City is we're hungry for the manifest presence of God. Like, we're just hungry for His presence. And I think about this property, and the more that I, I, I dream about it, and I just, I, I really believe that this can be a dwelling place for God. It can be a place where, and, and I've, I've experienced this in my own life, where I've been a part of other ministries that uh, really prayed for the land. I mean, we obviously know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, but I know and I believe this is true and I've seen it, that there can be places that I call thin places, places where people have, are hungry for God, that have yielded their hearts to Him, have prayed and blessed. And like that is our heart. When I think about the, what God is doing at Oak City, I think about a place where people can meet with God and people can meet with others. And I, I just want to invite you all with me even no matter what God does, is like, let's just bless this land. Let's bless what God is doing. Let's invite him to come in a powerful, significant way. And I believe God's going to do something amazing in our midst and in this land. You know, the greatest treasure that we have on earth, I believe, is that we get to steward the presence of God in our life. The word presence in Hebrew, if you look that up, it actually means face. So when we say the presence of God, in Hebrew, that word actually means face. It's a close encounter with God. It's actually, when we say the presence of God, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about, I'm talking about Him. And that's what we get the privilege to steward in our lives. And there's a, there's a man in the Bible that I think he wasn't a perfect man. He made moral failures, even plotted to kill somebody, and wasn't a perfect man, but was a warrior, was a shepherd, was a musician, was known as probably the greatest king in the history of Israel uh, to this day. And as, as, as you know, he defeated Goliath, and his name is David. And David was a man, and it says this about David, that David was a man after the heart of God. He was after God's own heart. And, and I want to read this, and I actually read it before service today, but Psalms 27 this is, I just want you to listen to David's heart here. And, and again, I think about David. David, again, he was this mighty warrior. 
defeated Goliath. He was a shepherd. He was a musician. He obviously was a writer. He wrote like almost half the Psalms. And, but he had this, this heart that was for God, that was for the presence of God. And Psalms 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I just I want you to, as I read this, like almost make this personal. Make this personal. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Like, don't you want that to be your life right there? That the Lord is your stronghold? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? When evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. Though an army deployed against me, my heart is not afraid. Wow, that's just a, there's a strength here that David has because his heart is with God. Though war break out against me, still I am confident. I have asked one thing. I love this verse. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking Him in His temple. I'm going to read this one more time. I, you know, you know my, my, my heart for my own life is that I love, I just think about all that David has done and the one thing, like I just think this is such a powerful thing that he chiseled his life down to is this. I have asked the Lord one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple. For he will conceal me in his shelter in the day of adversity. He will hide me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices in his tent with shouts of joy. Of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. One of our, our big foundations here at Oak City is to be a community that is after the presence of God. It's the reason why we have extended worship. It's the reason why we, we have ministry times. It's the reasons why we do our prophetic rooms and we pray for people and we do all of these things is because we're, we're, we're working to create a community of people. And that's what I love about you. It's what I love about all of y'all's hearts. And I see it, just your, your, your yieldedness to him and his presence. Because I, I personally believe that um, if we get the one thing right, I think all the other things will fall in line. I think if we get the one thing, if our, our desire, I love, I mean, David was this mighty king, and the thing that drew God to David, the thing that attracted God to David was his heart after God. It wasn't how tall he was. It wasn't how good looking he was. It wasn't how productive it, what he was. It wasn't how amazing he spoke or preached or did all of those things. What drew God, what attracted him, the person that God picked was, this is the man that I want because he has a heart after me. And I know that, I, that, that David has my heart. And I just think about us. I'm like, God, that is our one single desire is that we want to know the heart of the Father. That in everything that we do is we want to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. It doesn't mean, now it doesn't mean that all we do is hang out in the temple. Like David defeated Goliath. He was a warrior. I mean, this guy was an active man. I mean, you read his story. It doesn't mean that you're not productive. It doesn't mean that you don't impact the world and do amazing things. But it does mean that your heart is yielded in a place to God. And that is the greatest desire of ours. And that's, that's the community and the heart that we're building is a people that are just after God. And I, I want to just give you three things that I feel like David did that I think really attract the presence of God. Three things that, that I think as us, as a community of people, want to cultivate that I found even in my own life that I believe God is attracted to. <clears throat> and the first one is, is what I would call authenticity. If you read through the Psalms, David didn't pray like we did. You know, David would be like, God, where are you? Why aren't you speaking? Where the heck are you? you know, I mean, like David was, David was this just authentic, and he, and he wrote this throughout the Psalms of just sometimes just crying out to God. And there wasn't, he wasn't putting on a show. 
He wasn't going to God and putting on his religious suit and trying to pray the right way, but he was authentically going before God. And he was like, God, this is where I am. This is what I need. And he was just crying out to the Father. Uh, you know, the, <clears throat> the presence of God is not something that we can manufacture. It's not, you can't buy the presence of God. It's not an act that we put on. And, and you want to know, again, what the presence of God is attracted to. He's, he actually wants you. Like he actually does, he doesn't want the fake you. He doesn't want the made up you or the illusion you or the person that's putting something on. He actually wants us. He wants the real us. I love the, it's one of my favorite verses, Matthew 5 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. <laughs> like who's the one that's going to see God? It's the ones that actually have a pure heart towards him. I love this verse in John 4 23, talks about the true worshipers did a message on this not too long ago about the woman at the well, and this is in the context of that. And Jesus is talking to her, and he says, but the hour is coming and is here now when the true, and I love that word, I'm going to come back to this, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking people to worship him. That word, true worshipers, it's actually, it actually speaks towards this word of authenticity. I was looking up some of the definition of this, and it says it's the opposite of fictitious, counterfeit, imaginary, simulated, or pretended. It's not fake. It's not false. It's not put on. It's not a show. It's just authentic. It's an authentic worship to God. And I, I believe that this is actually what God, and Jesus says this, that he's looking for. I think when, when the Father in heaven, if he's looking at the earth, what is he looking for when he's searching the earth? I think that's what, what happened is he, he was looking at the earth of who's going to be the king of Israel, who's going to follow Saul, and all of a sudden he sees this shepherd boy on the backside of the mountain with the sheep that's not in front of the crowd, and he sees a, a man over there that is just crying out to God in his own life. On the backside of a mountain, I mean, you can only imagine you're hanging out with the sheep, you know, you're not in front of the crowd, it's not some big hoorah. But he's out there by himself. All his other brothers are doing all the amazing things. And he's on the backside of the mountain, but he's crying out to God. And I believe that, man, that in this day, in this hour, like God is, I believe, still is true. What Jesus said is that he's seeking true worshipers. He's seeking people like us, seeking people. And, and I believe that what he does is he comes and he dwells in, in, in that environment, in that place, in that heart. The other thing, so authenticity, I just, I want to encourage us to, in your own life, in my own life, to be authentic with God, to be real with Him, to be honest with Him, to be you with Him, and He's going to meet you when you're you. He's going to meet you in the place of where you're just being yourself. The other thing that doesn't go unnoticed that I think God is attracted to is hunger, and I put hunger and desperation together, but hunger doesn't go unnoticed in the kingdom. You know, you, I see this in the scriptures of Jesus when <clears throat> um, often Jesus would just be walking around, you know, doing his thing, and, and all of a sudden somebody that was desperate would come up to him. I think about blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus was on the side of the road, and he heard that Jesus was coming, and you can go read this. I think it's, it might be Matthew 10 or John 10, and he he's... He's sitting there crying out because he's blind and he has a need. And he's crying out, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd, actually some of the crowd begins to rebuke him. You know, it's interesting, the crowd sometimes will tell you to be quiet. And the crowd's sitting there rebuking him, telling him to be quiet. But he just all of a sudden cries out even louder, son of David, have mercy on me. And just lets his heart cry out to Jesus. And this is what I love about our King Jesus, is Jesus doesn't listen to what the crowd says, but he actually goes to blind Bartimaeus and asks him, what do you need? And obviously, he needs his sight to be healed. And Jesus, it's fascinating to me, because Jesus says, your, your faith has made you well. He says, and if you go read it, he actually says, your faith has made you well. What was his faith? His faith was actually a desperation. He needed a miracle. He, needed to, he wanted to be able to see. And God, Jesus, who is the nature of God, revealed to us that God responds to desperation. There's something about a hunger that God is attracted to. And <clears throat> I believe that um, hunger is a big deal. And, and even in our own lives, when maybe we don't feel hunger, hungry for God or we feel like we've gotten complacent in our own walks with God, I will say this, spending time with God 
and then actually doing the works of God, praying for people, loving people, encouraging people, serving, doing things like that, doing the food of God, it actually does kindle a fire inside of us. And so I would encourage you that if, if you're in a place where maybe I'm not that hungry, then a good thing to do is to spend some time with him. Often when I'm with him and spending time with him, I find hunger and desperation. But I encourage us to cry out. In the Psalms, one of the Psalms writers said, my heart and my flesh cry out to God. Hunger's a big deal. The third thing that I'll just give us today is honoring the presence of God. There's something about honoring when God moves and being, and I think a word that goes pretty close to this is being grateful for what God is doing being grateful for what God's doing. Um, I love to give my son, Johnny Jr., presents. I love to give him gifts. And if you know Johnny Jr., you know why. Like, his, he gets so excited about a prize. Like, he just loves presents. It's like the most, it's the most exciting thing to him in the world. If you go up to him and tell him, hey, hey son, I want to give you a prize. I mean, you'll just see, he'll try to, like, hold back his little smile, and it, like, starts coming out. And he's just so excited about a gift. And I, I want to give him more because of the excitement that he has in getting a gift. And, and I believe that, that the Father sees this in us, of when we are grateful. I think often, and I can see this in my own life, and sometimes God will move, and we might give God a little golf clap for what he did. But if you think about it, when you're thankful and grateful for what God does, I believe that the Father loves to pour more out on the grateful on the people that have a heart of gratitude, the people that have a thankful heart and really honor his presence. There was a, there's a, 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 in the scriptures, there was a place where Jesus was unable to do many miracles and God wasn't able, Jesus didn't do many miracles and it was in his hometown and he went to Nazareth and he, um, <clears throat> and he healed a few. It says that he healed a few, but the people there began to notice what was familiar. They were like, isn't this Joseph's boy? Isn't this Mary's boy? And who is this? Isn't this the carpenter, the carpenter's son? <coughs> and they began to look at him through that lens instead of honoring him as who he really was, as the son of God. And it says that he wasn't able to do many miracles among them because they didn't honor who he was. And there's something about when we honor God and we honor what God is doing, I believe it gives life to what he's doing. And he actually moves even more because we're honoring what God's doing in our midst. <coughs> so I want to, if you can, I want you to stand up with me. <coughs> I'm going to have our, our team come back up. <coughs> Yeah, my, my, my heart for this morning, and I, I shared this, of just our why and just the power of the presence of God and just being a community, a people that value His presence and what God's doing in our midst. And I, uh, I think it's one of the greatest privileges that we get to have is that we get to walk with God and that we get to cultivate His presence in our lives. And we want to be a community no matter where we go, no matter where the, the cloud by day or the fire by night leads us, uh, we want to make it about King Jesus and about his presence and his kingdom. And so I just want to pray for us. We're going to end in a song. I'm going to have, I do have some um, prayer servants that are going to come up. And uh, if you need a miracle in your body today, if you need um, somebody just to lay hands on you, I encourage you to do that. I, I, I will say this. I, I think... In my own life, seeing God move in my life, I feel like there's, I would give you three things. One is, is just my own time with God, just my own intimacy with Him, praying, spending time with Him, reading the Word, I think is an extremely important practice. The other thing is, I do believe corporate worship is um, so important to be with the body of Christ. There's just, there's some things, I don't think this is fully accurate, but I, I think you'll catch my heart, but I think there's, some things that you can only get with God by yourself in like an intimate place where it's just you and him. There's, there's nothing else. It's not, I'm not doing it for the crowd. I also think that there's some things that you get in an environment like this that you can't get alone, that we were actually meant to be a body and worship together. 
And so I think this is a, a, a huge thing. The other thing that I was going to say is all throughout scriptures, all throughout the scripture, um, is the laying on of hands, is having people pray for you. And there's something powerful about, even it says, lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you read through Acts and a lot of the scripture, you'll see that many times they would lay hands on each other and bless each other. And so I I think it's just another way to cultivate God's presence in your life. And we make that available. We try to every week. And our team would love to pray for you this week if you need prayer. But Father, we love you. God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for your presence. It truly is amazing, Father, that you come. God, we could take that for granted. We could take for granted that you actually show up, that you actually move in our midst. God, that you're, you're so true to your word that where two or three gather in your name, you're there. You're in the midst. God, I'm I'm grateful for everything that you've done in my life. I'm grateful for everything that you've done at Oak City to this point. God, we honor that. We're grateful, Father. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would give us, just as a community, grateful hearts. Lord, we want to have a grateful heart for all that you've done. And Holy Spirit, we just welcome you, God. I thank you that this next season for Oak City, Lord, we've seen you do so much, but God, I believe there's so much more. I believe there's so much more that you're going to do in our midst. And Holy Spirit, we do. We just say that we want to open the roof even more. We just want to ask for more. We want to pray for more manifestation of your presence and your grace and your power and your moving in our midst. God, Father, I pray that these next 10 years would blow our minds, Lord, with what is possible with you, God. Lord, I pray that even what we think is possible, I pray that we would start to think the way that you think, God, that we would see our families and our city, Father. Lord, that we would see wherever it is that you take us, that we would see it with your eyes and what is possible with you, God. And Father, I pray that you would give us the courage to step into everything that you've called us to step into. God, I pray that even places where we have religious mindsets or things that limit us in what is possible with you, God, we want you to undo us and redo us, God. We want you to change the way we think so that we can think like you, that we can set our minds on things above. And God, we welcome you into this place more.